Hi, I'm Aaron, and today I'm going to share about a motion planning technique developed in the 1990s that is still in use today called the Probabilistic Roadmap Method, or PRM for short. All code is available as online Mathematica demonstrations. See the links in the description. This demonstration uses PRM to plan a motion path for a two-link robot that avoids collisions with a blue sphere and an orange sphere. First, click Add 25 Vertices to randomly sample configurations and calculate if they collide with obstacles or are safe. We color configurations in collision red and color safe configurations green. Next, select Radius value to try to connect safe vertices less than radius distance apart into a road map. If a path from the initial to goal configuration is found, it can be traversed with the Progress slider. Although the PRM does not need to calculate the configuration space obstacles, you can make them visible with a checkbox. Now the goal of robot motion planning is to find a continuous path from an initial configuration to a goal configuration that is collision free. When we say configuration, we mean a complete specification of every point on the robot. This demonstration uses a two link robot with two rotational joints that can each rotate from zero to two pi. The resulting configuration space can be represented as a toroid and so wraps from 2 pi to 0 on the edges of the plot shown. Obstacles in the robot's workspace map to obstacle regions in the configuration space, but computing these regions is computationally expensive. Instead, the probabilistic roadmap method, or PRM, attempts to solve the motion planning problem by building a graph that represents the connectivity of the configuration space. This avoids the need to explicitly compute the configuration space obstacles and changes the motion planning problem into a graph search problem. It requires A, being able to determine whether a configuration is in collision with any obstacle, and B, a local planner that can quickly determine if two configurations can be joined by a collision-free path. Typically, this local planner checks if a straight line path in the configuration space is possible. The PRM has two phases, the learning and the query phase. In the learning phase, you A, generate random points in the configuration space and calculate if they are in the free configuration space, are they green points, or in collision with obstacles, shown as red points. And then B, you attempt to connect points in the free configuration space to their nearest neighbors less than radius distance apart using that local planner. These two steps generate the roadmap. In practice, you repeat these learning steps for as long as you have time and memory to store the results. When the learning phase is finished, now in the query phase, the local planner attempts to connect the initial configuration to the nearest point in the roadmap, and then the goal configuration to the nearest point in the roadmap. I've drawn these in purple. Then a graph search is used to find the shortest path in that roadmap. In this demonstration, I use A star search to find that shortest path. Now changing the obstacle positions requires rebuilding the roadmap, so you have to repeat the learning phase. You can reuse the random configurations, but you have to recompute if they are in collision, and then you must also redo trying to connect the points to their neighbors. Longer radius values require more computation, but they result in a denser roadmap and, in general, shorter paths. PRM was developed in 1996 by Lydia Kavraki et al. PRMs generate a roadmap that can be reused for subsequent motion planning queries. PRM was designed for high dimensional configuration spaces, so dimensions of five or more, so like robot arms or multi-robot arms. But this demonstration uses two dimensions for ease of visualization. Now, the traditional lecture on PRM illustrates the algorithm with a 2D workspace. This trivializes the process because 2D workspaces are easy. It especially annoys me when lectures show the configuration space obstacles. If you actually knew the configuration space obstacles, then you could solve for the optimal path with a pencil and a straight edge. To better understand PRM, 
This demonstration challenges you to move a seven link robot, shown in brown, to match a goal configuration, drawn in green, with the minimum number of collisions. You drag the locators to move the robot while trying to avoid collisions with the blue obstacles. This example was used in 1995 to introduce the probabilistic roadmap method. Selecting relative movement changes the angle of one robot link at a time, and absolute rotates all subsequent links. This game isn't much fun, and it's hard to fold the robot up and manipulate it around, and that's the point. Remember, the goal of robot motion planning is to find a continuous path from an initial configuration to a goal configuration that is collision free. Remember, this configuration is a complete specification of every point on the robot. This demonstration is using a seven link robot with seven rotational joints, and each joint can rotate from zero to two pi. The resulting configuration space can also be represented as a seven dimensional torus, but good luck drawing that. Obstacles in the robot's workspace also map to obstacle regions in the configuration space, but computing these regions is very computationally expensive. Planning for robots in high dimensional spaces is difficult because representing the connected parts of a high dimensional space requires a number of samples that grows exponentially with the dimensionality of the space. This is commonly called the curse of dimensionality. Now, it is hard to represent configuration spaces for more than three degrees of freedom, but three is more exciting than two, and it helps illustrate how the problem increases in complexity with extra degrees of freedom. Now this demonstration uses the probabilistic roadmap method, again, to plan a motion path for a three-link robot in a 3D configuration space, while avoiding collisions with a blue and a yellow sphere. If a path from the initial configuration to the goal configuration is found, it can be traversed by moving this progress slider. To generate a new roadmap, you click restart and then click add vertices to randomly sample configurations and calculate if they collide with obstacles, again shown in red, or are safe, shown in green. If no path is found, continue adding vertices or increase the radius value to try to connect safe vertices less than radius distance apart into a roadmap. Again, remember, the PRM does not need to calculate the configuration space obstacles. But sometimes it's fun to make them visible with this checkbox. So on this three-link robot, each rotational joint can rotate from zero to two pi. The joints can each rotate independently, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Obstacles in the robot's workspace map to obstacle regions in this 3D configuration space. The robot's joint angles are specified by theta one, theta two, and theta three. You can also adjust the two obstacle positions in 3D. Now these configuration space obstacles are these weird yellow and blue shapes for a 3D robot. You can imagine that they are even stranger for robots with more degrees of freedom. Again, if we change the obstacle positions, then we have to rebuild the entire roadmap. The restart button removes all the sampled configurations, and the new goal button randomly assigns a new goal position. The PRM can be reused for arbitrary starting and ending positions. I'm using an A-star search to compute the shortest path. The PRM is powerful because it changes the motion planning problem from path planning around these unknown configuration space obstacles to finding the shortest path in a graph. Computer scientists are really good at solving the shortest path in a graph. One way to remember this algorithm is to understand that the PRM is actually building a roadmap, just like when you use Google Maps to plan a route across country. As soon as it can connect you and your destination onto a road, it can quickly map a path using a pre-computed network of roads and interstate highways. Here's a cool trick. It's easy to identify a PRM path in practice. Notice that this robot following a PRM doesn't try to build a smooth path just a path that connects the initial and the goal configurations. This makes the robot look somewhat spastic. The local planner in this case is just linearly interpolating between joint configurations. If you have the processing time, you can shorten the final path and make the path look better by applying some path smoothing. You can also improve the path by making a roadmap with more configurations and more connections. You can see here as I add points that the total path length 
does decrease. I mentioned that I used ASAR search instead of BFS, breath first search, which is also known as Dijkstra's algorithm. Here is a demonstration that finds the shortest path between two green points across a field of black obstacles using either Dijkstra's algorithm or ASTAR search. The process of the search algorithm is shown stepwise, with tiles becoming highlighted as they are scanned. The final path, after the process is complete, is shown in red. You can vary the positions of the starting and the endpoints, the layout of the obstacles, and the search algorithm. This problem is here illustrated on a 17 by 17 array, with one green cell specified as a start, another as the end, and other black cells occupied by inaccessible obstacles. Movement is allowed in the four cardinal directions as well as diagonally, except past sharp corners of obstacles. The shortest path is found by converting this array to a graph with one vertex for each node of the array, with vertices adjacent if the corresponding tiles are adjacent. Edge costs correspond to Euclidean distance, with cost of 1 for taking one step in a cardinal direction, and square root of 2 for taking a diagonal step. The two search algorithms, Dijkstra's algorithm and A star search, are common algorithms used for finding shortest paths on a graph. Dijkstra's algorithm is an iterative process that attempts to find the shortest path from a start vertex to every other vertex. It maintains a list of permanent distances for some vertices and tentative distances for others. Each iteration consists of making one tentative distance permanent and then calculating tentative distances for all neighbors of the new permanent vertex. The animation produced displays the permanent set as dark blue, the tentative set as light blue, and the unvisited set as white. A star search is a modified version of Dijkstra's algorithm. It is a directed search that uses a distance heuristic to preferentially select vertices likely to be closer to the finished vertex. In this case, that heuristic is the Euclidean distance from each vertex to the finished vertex. In general, A star does a good job of moving directly toward the finish over an open area, but because the heuristic does not take obstacles into account, in the worst case, it can take just as long as Dijkstra's algorithm. Well, I hope I've taken away some of the fear of implementing a PRM algorithm. As I mentioned, all this code is available in Mathematica, but it's an easy thing to translate it into your favorite language. Happy roboting.